The second year of life, 12 to 24 months, is a year that's marked with energy. The child's full of curiosity and full of enthusiasm. The rate of growth for the child at this point begins to slow down. It's much more um, slower than the first year. And um, important developments are beginning to take place, but they're more cognitive. So this begins a time when they have uh, limited motor, social, language, cognitive skills, but they're developing significantly between this 12 and 24 month period. Because the child begins to be mobile, they begin to explore more. And because they begin to explore more, then they are developing their, their cognitive domain as well, as well as their physical domain. And because they are more mobile, they also have more frequent bumps, scrapes, bruises, falls, injuries. And this is because they don't understand cause and effect. They don't understand if they take a step off the top of the stairs that they will fall all the way down. And so it's very important to uh, keep a close eye on a toddler. Vocabulary acquisition is becoming more rapid, which allows them to engage in more complex thinking and more communication. No is a favorite word of a toddler. And tantrums can become a norm because the toddler is beginning to become more independent. And a child who lacks ways to express them, themselves in words often expresses themselves in emotions. So tantrums are very um, normal for two-year-olds. Becoming more independent is important because it helps the child develop their sense of autonomy. Now one-year-olds are very egocentric. Everything is focused on mine. That's mine. That's mine and um, everything is just focused on them. Children in this age category play alone. They may look like they're playing with someone, but primarily they are playing by themselves. We call that solitary play. They might imitate the actions of others playing near them, but they don't really play with others at one year old. Their growth expect expectation in the first year is two to three inches. Their average height is somewhere between 32 to 35 inches. They gain about one quarter to one half pound per month, and their average weight is 21 to 27 pounds during that year. They gain six to 10 new teeth during this year, and their body shape begins to change and becomes more adult-like. Um, but they're still very top-heavy, and their abdomen still sticks out. Their vision does improve. It's about 2060 at this point instead of 2020. Their motor skills, they begin to crawl at um, 12 months and then uh, it, uh, their motor skills develop a lot during that uh, time because they begin to walk. They begin to stand alone. They can get to their feet without trouble. They can walk unassisted um, near the end of that 24 month period. They use furniture to pull themselves up and move themselves down. They hold objects and release them voluntarily. They like to push or pull toys while they're walking. They pick up objects and throw them repeatedly, especially when you pick it up for them and put it back. They like to throw it again. They attempt to run. They like to crawl up the stairs. They use all four limbs to do that. They like to sit in small chairs down low to the ground. They carry around toys, especially their favorite ones. They like to use markers and crayons to scribble. They try to help feed themselves. They like to help turn pages of the book and they can stack two to four objects. In their perceptual and cognitive domains, they enjoy hiding things. They put things in their mouth a little less often than the first year. They enjoy looking at picture books, especially when they're being held, and, and that's a social emotional thing. They put the spoon in the bowl and pretend to eat. They like to pound things. They like to try to make their dolls stand up, and they name everyday objects. They begin to show increasing spatial development by putting uh, like a peg into a hole or a large puzzle piece into a large space. Um, they place several items in a container and they enjoy dumping them out and they use facial expressions, but sometimes those facial expressions aren't always accurate. In speech and language, um, they proceed with jargon and they use one word to convey an entire meaning and that when they use one word to convey a, an entire meaning, um, it it's called holographic speech. So they might say milk because they want their bottle, or ba for their bottle, or they might say go. Um, and then later they put two words together and that's called telegraphic speech. So 
they might say something like more milk um, or I go and they follow simple directions they point to familiar things and point to familiar people and pets they understand and identify some body parts especially if someone names them so you say can you point to your nose they might point to their nose can you point to your stomach they might point to their stomach they identify a few desired objects by name so you know if they want their bottle they might say ba or they uh, might want their their toy or their bunny and they might say bun or something like that um, they respond to simple yes and no questions they have about 20 to 25 to 50 percent um, intelligible speech so if a sentence has five words in it, you might understand one or two words. They locate familiar objects upon request. They have expressive language between five and 50 words. Now, remember, that's up to 24 months. They use gestures. They enjoy rhymes and songs. They like to sing and dance. And they seem aware of reciprocal conversation that you speak, I speak, you speak, I speak. In their social emotional domain, they remain friendly towards others. They help, uh, uh, help to pick up things when they're asked to pick up. They play alone for short periods of time, and they enjoy being held, and they enjoy being read to. They like to observe and imitate adults, and they're eager for adult attention. And they recognize themselves in the mirror. They begin to show independence. They resort to tantrums occasionally, and they show curiosity all the time. On a daily routine, the, the um, 12 to 24 month old has a smaller appetite than a one year old. They're busy. They want to be on the go. They're more interested in being on the go than they are in eating. Lunch is often the preferred meal. They have food jags. Sometimes they'll eat just the same thing over and over and over again. They'll hold their food in their mouth and not swallow when they're done eating. They'll use their spoon some. They uh, show control in the use of a cup. They help to feed themselves. They try to wash themselves. Um, they like to help when they're getting dressed. They also like to undress. They let adults know when they want their diaper changed. They begin to gain some control over their bladder. Uh, and they sleep 10 to 12 hours per night. They develop a strong sense of property, often using the word mine. Something is mine. They enjoy helping, but often get into trouble when they do this. I remember one time I left my, um, I went into the bathroom and my son got into some baby powder and he actually made it out the front door. And when I came out of the bathroom, I noticed that the front door was open. And so I actually was very scared and I went looking for him. And I found him right outside my front door with the baby powder and he was squirting it on the neighbor's door and he had already squirted it all over the side of the building. So I had to go the vacuum cleaner out there with him and help clean up my neighbor's door. So they get into all kinds of things and they think they're helping. Mm -hmm. Their social emotional domain, they uh, remain friendly to others. They help to pick up when asked. They play alone for short periods and then they enjoy being held and read to. Um, occasionally as they get older they begin to play alongside another child and that's called parallel play. Remember, at the beginning is called solitary play when they play alone, but when they start to play alongside another child, it's called parallel play. They like to continue to take a nap. They wake up slowly from their nap and need time to adjust. Some children, um, some ways to help the children develop the way that they are is responding to their language and describing what they're doing. So often the child will um, kind of jabber about something, but you can put those words in their mouth for them. You can say, oh, I see that you want the crayons. The crayons are on top of the desk. I'm going to get the crayons for you. Would you like a blue crayon? Would you like some paper to draw on? Things like that. Just describe what you're doing. I'm going to go get the paper now. I'm putting the paper down so you can draw. Would you like mommy to draw with you? I'm going to draw a picture of a flower. And just use as much vocabulary as you can. So um, encourage the, the toddler to point to familiar objects. Can you find the bunny? Can you find uh, the cup? Can you point to the car? That sort of thing. So they're able to express their receptive language even though they can't say it. Um, hide a toy and then give a child clues to where it is. So you might hide, the, hide the, uh, their favorite stuffed animal and stuff it in the couch. Can you go find your bunny? Your bunny is, is in the living room. Let's go look in the living room. Your bunny is on a place where we sit. Where do we sit? Point to where we sit. 
Okay, uh, let's point to the we'll go over to the couch and then continue giving the child clues. You can provide blocks for stacking or stacking rings or sorting items, nesting items. Those are all things that the child does really well with. Um, allow water play. Make sure that they're safe. Make sure they're not somewhere where they're going to slip or fall in. And of course, you have to supervise it. But children love to play with water. And put the favorite toy in a spot so the child has to move towards it to use their motor skills to get there. Now, things to watch out for at this age. Like I said, toddlers get into everything. You have to watch out for electrical burns and thermal burns. Choking hazards. Um, their food could be too large and they get, um, they get choking on it. Um, I had a child in the class, an older child, once choke on a piece of pepperoni. The pepperoni was about that big around, and the child swallowed it fast, and it lodged right in her throat, and we had to do the Heimlich maneuver to make it pop out. So uh, be careful, especially those children's meals, Lunchables, things like that. Make sure that they're cut up um, small enough for the child to be able to not get it caught in their throat. You have to look out for water hazards. Um, a child is not afraid of water, and so they oftentimes will fall in. Um, my child, when he was um, a little bit older than this, he, um, I was in the pool, his father was in the pool, um, and he was sitting on the edge of the pool, and he reached over to get something and he fell in, and he just sat on the bottom of the pool. And I can remember it in seconds, it just took just probably like three seconds for us to get over there and grab him, but I remember seeing him and he was just sitting underwater with his eyes open, not trying to get up at all. And so that's very scary. Children are not afraid of water, and so you have to be very careful with them around water. Um, you have to be careful of poisons and um, keep things in child safe cabinets. Children will put lots of things in their mouth. You have to be careful of falls. A child will fall down the steps easily, um, or walk off something. You need to be careful of strangulations. Um, another story I have is when my child was a different, my other son was 22 months. He got his foot caught in a mini blind cord and he broke his femur. And so um, that's something that you would never think about. He was excited to go get a snack in the kitchen. He was sitting next to me in a chair. He plopped himself down on the ground and went to go run. And at that time, the mini blind cords were looped. They weren't um, cut apart. But oftentimes people tie them together. And so you have to be very careful that that's a strangulation um, or a tripping hazard and um, it actually yanked him up in the air and he fell down and he broke his femur. So you would never think of that, but that's, that's a hazard. And so um, those are things that we have to be careful about. Um, a parent should consult a doctor if the child doesn't speak or doesn't repeat words, if the child doesn't understand new words, if the child doesn't respond to yes or no, if the child doesn't walk by the end of 24 months, if the child doesn't exhibit emotions, if they don't show interest in pictures, if they don't recognize themselves in the mirror, if they don't make eye contact when responding to questions, or if they don't attempt to feed themselves.